Another component in your communication plan should involve some language in your agreement about your understanding of how you're going to allow various uh, third parties, including family members and friends, to integrate uh, with your children. Ultimately, if you're like most folks, there's going to be grandmas and grandpas and uncles and aunts that want to also have a relationship with your child. And understanding what their, their role is and understanding the importance of, uh, that they need to have of your plan is, is critical because uh, many times, and grandma and grandpas can be famous for this, they can sabotage a situation and sometimes they don't even realize that they've done that. It's important that your um, parents, uncles and aunts, people that you're going to be interface understand that you have agreed in your mediation that you are in your mediation agreement that um, you're not going to allow for situations where other parties are going to speak negatively or adversely about uh, your children. Uh, I mean about about you around your children and the reason for that is um, as we've indicated in other videos your children are very very loyal to you and uh, many people when I ask the question who does it ultimately hurt if grandma is saying bad things about dad to your child and most people say oh well it hurts the child well of course it does hurt the child who it ultimately hurts the worst in that scenario is grandma because your child is going to gravitate to their parents and small children usually will manifest that by just saying, I don't want to go visit grandma. I don't want to be there. And you might ask why and, and, and they may not even be able to explain themselves because they're not sure why they, other than they just feel yucky because grandma continues to say bad things about dad. Sometimes those statements are done uh, in ways that are uh, less than obvious or at least we the person saying them think it's less than obvious for example if grandma was to say to a seven-year-old as they grab their cheeks and hug them when they arrive at their house we miss you so much and we wish that your mother would let you come see us more often now if you approach grandma and say that was a very mean thing to say. Grandma, of course, may say, it's true, I do miss, I, didn't, I do miss my grandchild. But that's not what they said. They left room to make a negative comment. And trust me, a seven-year-old child is very capable of picking up on that comment and will very much understand and construe that to mean a negative uh, that there is a negative feeling towards his, his mother in that situation. Please sit down with all of the people that you think your children are going to interface with and say to them, we can't have you saying negative things and sharing negative opinions about the other parent. It's something that we feel strongly about. You'll be surprised if how most people actually are relieved to hear that they're not required any longer to say negative things. Part of the reason they're saying negative things perhaps could be that earlier when the relationship was deteriorating, you coached them to do so as you were forming your camps. They feel like that's their role. Give them permission that they don't have to do that anymore and let your child benefit from having great relationships with, with these third parties.